Hello, today I'm going to show you how to add a user to your Linux system. When finishing any Linux installation, you're left with only the super user account, known as root. However, being logged in as root can cause problems for your system, such as accidentally changing settings or installing or updating programs you don't want to. It's always in the best practice to create and use unprivileged users' accounts for most tasks, and only using the root account for system and administration only. Here's a bit of a quick note. Now users and groups are a mechanism for access control. Administrators may fine tune group membership and ownership to grant or deny users and services to system resources. This means that we can create rules on what a user or services have access to at any given time. We want users to have access to their own files and directories. Also, we want services to have limited access to system resources for a more secure box. Okay, I'm going to add a user to the system. It's really simple. I'm going to type in user add Bob G. And it's really that simple to add a user. However, I also need to create a password for him. So I'm going to type in P A S S W D and the name of the account. In this case, it's Bob G. Hit enter. And I'm going to type in this new password. and it was successfully updated. Now I'm going to log into his account. Bob G. Now I'm going to type in his password. And as you can see, I logged in, but however, I don't have a directory or anything else set out for him. Don't worry, we'll remedy that next time we create his account. So, here we go. Currently, I'm going to remove Bob from the system by using the user delete command. And he's been successfully removed from the system. Before we add Bob again to the computer, let's check out a few options that we have. Or rather, there are two files that the user add command looks at when creating a new user. The first one we're going to look at is called the etsy forward slash login definitions. Pretty much we're going to do a nano etc login dot defs. Each system is going to be different in the terms of options you have, but we're going to look at a few options that are going to concern us, such as password aging controls. Now, as you can see, we have four different options when it comes to password aging controls. We have a max days, a min days, and a morning age. And these ones are pretty much self-explanatory, but max days is usually the maximum number of days a personal password may be used. It's like a time of life for a password. It could be three days to one day to an entire year. It's really up to you. But the system defaults is over couple of years or up to the max it seems. The next one we have is the uh, min days which is minimum numbers of days uh, allowed between password changes. It means how many times can you change a password between a lot of time. It could be three days you have to wait until you change it or it could be no days or one or it could be an entire year. And the next one is password warning age. It's usually to let the user know that they're going to have to change their password in seven days or so. So it's just to get them ready and to make sure that they're not going to forget about when the day comes to change their password. Usually about that time it's the best to start talking to system admins or the person who runs your network to get a password changed ahead of time so you won't be struggling on the day it happens. Here we have the identification numbers for the users, systems, and processes. Now each uh, network administrator may have your um, system set up differently for each one. Like you can have rules governing on how a um, person or service should be numbered. Such as even numbers only be users while odd numbers should be systems. Or even anything that ends with a zero is a printer or a file server. System administrators can get creative when using and working with these type of numbers, but as they keep things organized and to see what type of um, users accessing certain specific resources and whether they should have access to it or not. 
You can also manage group IDs a similar way. In fashion, it just gets really complicated sometimes, and depending on what type of um, users and groups you have on your, on your network or system, so that you can have uh, different type of memberships of of users, such as you can have a um, file clerks, and you can also have a um, graphic design team work on the same computer or network, and it can have access to different resources or access to the same printer, but using and staying segregated. Such as you don't want your people working with office applications to be using a thousand dollar plotting machine that's used for architectures because those stuff can get pretty expensive. So this is a way to keep things organized and things segregated in a specific way. Another thing you may want to note in here are the login times such as retries, you get 5, and a timeout such as, which is in seconds like you have to wait 60 seconds. You can always change it to days but you have to use multiply pliers to get the time of seconds in days. The next file I'm going to show you is the SC default user add. However, you can, there's two ways to uh, access it. You can type in user add space hyphen capital D and hit enter and they'll show you what your default things and settings are such as directory or the values as well. Another way to get to it or to, if you want to see what it looks like is to cat etsy forward slash default user add and hit enter. It's pretty much what this is what the file looks like. It's pretty much the same at the top However, since we know the location of it, we can actually edit it to our liking. But let's go and view this one line by line. On the first two lines of the file, we see a hashtag. The hashtag tells the command to ignore anything beyond this point to the end of the line and should be disregarded. This is useful for comments such as adding your own or keeping, making sure that you have default settings saved for later usage. Now on the third line, we see group equals 100. What this tells the user add command is that whenever you new users create, put them in the group 100. So they have a GUID of 100. After group, we have home. This tells the user add to give them a default directory of home. It will be for slash home. Now the negative, now the inactive, is for accounts with expired passwords. This tells the command how long should an account remain open if the password has expired. Such as if they don't change it on their, when they're supposed to, or with a negative one, it'll just keep it um, active forever. But if you set it to a day, such as one day or two days, it will expire on the day it expires after expiration, meaning they won't be able to log in. This is where you would make some hefty choices and tell people on your network or on your system whether or not to uh, enforce uh, password rotations which is usually important in network security or keeping your network secure. Now expire is usually set to uh, make accounts passwords expire on a specific date. Usually it's left empty but if you were going to change it it would be either date first followed by a hyphen month hyphen and year each system will have it differently, so you should always check your system documentation. Now the shell variable you see is to tell the user command what sh shell for the user should use. As you can see, it's a standard bin bash, so no real changes here unless you want them to use a specific type of shell. The scale is actually called a skeleton directory. What it does is it tells the command to copy any files or folders within the scale directory onto the user's new home directory. Quite simply, think of Windows systems when they have a documents, a music, and pictures. It's pretty much the same thing. When you create a new user, the Windows operating system goes through the directories oh, and says, hey, I see these directories here, so I'm just going to copy and paste them onto the new user's account so they have these directories. The next is to create mail spool. Usually it's set to no unless you want to start your own mail server sometimes. You, don't, you really don't need to mess with the create mail unless you really need to. 
but you should always, really, always read your documentation on your Linux flavor you're currently using. Now I'm ready to add Bob to this system. I'm going to type in user add space minus m. This tells the command to create the directory of home. Now I'm going to type in space minus g space users. This tells the command to, when I'm creating Bob, I want him to be in a group called users. Now I'm going to type in the name of the account, bobg, and hit enter. Now I need to create a password for him. So I'm going to type in passwd, name of the account, bobg, and I'm going to type in this new password. Now I'm going to test the account by logging in. As you can see, we're successfully logged in. And this is how you create a new account. Just a quick reminder, you should always check your default values by looking at the um, files I showed you earlier. Remember the Etsy login, such as cat space etc login dfs. You should always check this and always remember to check the other file that says cat etc forward slash default forward slash user add and to see what type of values you have when creating a new account. You can always change this to your liking but just be sure to know what you're doing and you should have a specific reason on why you're changing it. As a side note Creating users is an important job and should never be taken lightly. Each user should have a strong password and you should always change it regularly. And thank you for watching.